Howdy mates, how are we all doing? Here's a part two video for today. Still over at Lido Key right now, out on our kayaks. I'm actually over with my uh, older brother and sister-in-law out there in the distance, Skyler and Kaylee. But uh, right now we're just at a little rest stop at the moment. We're actually on a little other site called bird key but yeah essentially where we are is an opportunity for plenty of mangroves that you can go kayaking through predominantly you will see mostly red mangroves so those are the ones where you'll typically see closest to the water such as this instance and they're the ones that produce all of those intricate prop roots as well so yeah essentially where we are we're seeing a bunch of brackish water so we are essentially at an estuary so we're seeing that mixture of salt and fresh water so as I wanted to point out in my last video but I didn't really have much of a chance because I was concentrating more on navigating through. We actually have something called the upside down jellyfish right here. And you can see that they are very numerous as well. With that being said, jellyfish actually fall under a group of nadarians. So really they don't have any they really don't have many organs whatsoever. I mean, they, they don't even have a brain at all. And mostly they're made out of, I'm trying to remember what it's called. It's, it's, it describes like a gel material. Hence, part of the reason why they're called jellyfish in the first place. So you may be wondering like, why is it that they appear upside down? Well, there's a reason for that. I'm actually going to pull one out. I know you probably think I'm crazy because they might sting, but I'll explain in a second why they're not as bad as you think they may be. So what's neat about the upside down jellyfish is, as you could tell, it was always appears upside down. There's a reason for that. If you actually look very carefully along its underside, there's actually a particular algae that resides on their body. It's actually called zooxanthellae. Very similar type of algae also resides on many of our corals. So in a sense, what's happening here is a result of a symbiotic relationship. So with that being said, the symbiotic relationship is between the jellyfish and the algae itself. So think of it this way. The jellyfish is sort of like the apartment. Now, in exchange, the algae, actually their form of payment, <laughs> as in like rent, they actually provide oxygen and food for the upside down jellyfish. And in turn, the jellyfish is the apartment for the algae, a place for it to reside. Now, because of that symbiotic relationship, they really have no need to be as predatory. So that's why when you really touch these, it, they don't really sting that much at all. I mean, I'm like touching all of its underside a little bit, and, and there is no stinging whatsoever. And that's just simply because it's already receiving pretty much all the food it needs. So it really just doesn't need to be hunting whatsoever. Now, going off of that, they're always upside down so that the algae always has an opportunity to be in contact with sunlight. Because obviously algae needs sunlight to use photosynthesis to produce oxygen, and glucose. But there's just a remarkable creature 
you know, considering that there aren't many jellyfish that appear upside down whatsoever. But I've noticed that this bay is full of them. I mean, they are just so numerous right now. Look at this. I mean, you figure in this little patch alone, there's probably up to, oh, I would probably say a few thousand. I mean, it's just so remarkable. And they range in sizes, too. Like, this is actually one of the largest ones I've seen so far. And then some of them are like little babies right there. But they are just so remarkable. But that is where you really see that example of a symbiotic relationship. But yeah, it's just it's such a gorgeous day to be out here. This was something different. You know what I'm saying? Nope. You can see them running a little bit. We've got some, uh, they call them fiddler crabs. And they call they call them fiddler crabs because if you look at their claws, it resembles something of a fiddle. And, it, and the size of it is actually rather disproportionate to the rest of its body. But they always have these little holes that they fill in which essentially serve as their home but they're very shy they don't really like to be around too many people so all right you guys i'll show you just a tiny little bit of scenery here definitely when you walk through something like this just watch out for the sand spurs because i just walked through a little bit of them and they definitely hurt they're like the they're like the florida equivalent of a lego so but sharper and more painful so definitely keep on the lookout for that if you're ever in this particular area but yeah that's my piece on this video so all right you guys thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it and once again, journey on a journey is outwards. Take care, folks. See ya. Take care, you guys.